hello everyone. Uh, I'm pleased to be the anchor of this wonderful uh, conference. So I really enjoy the enjoy this position, and um, I'd love to tell you today about the magic of uh, modular timber architecture. So we already know that modular uh, construction can uh, reduce the delivery time, improve the quality of buildings, and also reduce the risk uh, of construction in general for, for developers. Uh, 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 but can we really use modular timber construction to save our planet? And can we really use it to to solve the two big crises that we do have in, uh, currently in the world, so related to construction and buildings. One of them is this housing crisis. So we know that still the uh, number of people in the world is still uh, rising quite sharply. We have uh, more and more people moving into cities. So we have a greater than ever demand for new and, and well-designed affordable buildings. And on the other hand, obviously, we have a climate crisis and the construction and then buildings in general um, are a big contributors to the greenhouse gas emissions. Can we use modular timber construction to, to bring the impact to the environment down as well? So these are the big questions. And, and, and can we solve it what we have at the moment? And I don't think we can really. I think we're missing some critical uh, critical parts of the modular construction, which we only recently started to address in uh, in larger scale, and these are mostly to do uh, with the design of modular buildings. Uh, we know buildings uh, production of buildings in factory conditions takes lesser and lesser time, so the really the production and construction uh, time has significantly increased. And instead of months and years, we're now building it in days and weeks, one, one can say. But the design time, on the other hand, has increased. And instead of weeks and months we used to spend on design, we're now spending months and years maybe um, and still not get it right. So, so we can safely say that design of modular buildings really is a bottleneck at, at this stage. And the next next uh, uh, next innovation and and the next big change really need to uh, uh, start from the design. And but let me just try to paint you a, a picture of ideal modular timber modular uh, building lifespan because that kind of outlines why design is so important. And and I'm going to do it in reverse order. So we start from the end of the lifespan. So we we start with the environment. So how do you want our natural and cultural environments to, to stay after the building's been uh, taken down, disassembled? So we, we, want, we still want our uh, forests and landscapes to be natural or semi-natural the least. So, so it all has to start from there. Uh, we should be able to get, uh, get rid of our buildings as, as uh, easily as we built them. Um, uh, so, so one big of that is actually how do we treat the uh, construction waste in the end of the lifespan and, uh, uh, and, and how do we put it back into our landscape uh, or if, if we do need to put anything back to the landscape because I think modular buildings allow, um, gives us opportunity to really think of the circularity of materials and components at, uh, at two different levels uh, uh, to say the least. Is one is a component level really. So we take we take the we take the building parts to the, the main uh, components, uh, timber studs, for example. Or uh, 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 but at the modular level, we have the, uh, the other opportunity to build the circular systems, and then that's a circulation of uh, modules themselves. So and then. We also need to think of modular naturally in, in that during the, the biggest part of the building lifespan is the use of it. So how do we actually manage, how do we maintain our buildings, how you can replace kitchens and, and, and maybe change the layouts of the buildings in, a, in modular buildings. And, and that will definitely, if designed right, uh, uh, we will actually get extra efficiency du during the maintenance. Uh, uh, the future delivery methods Will, uh, will be able to work with modular and uh, so to ensure the timely delivery of new components or, or simply the delivery of uh, 
of uh, our common uh, everyday uh, goods. Obviously, the modular will uh, uh, will enhance the assembly of the buildings, and then we can build them really fast. And that's what we're already doing, kind of. But it it, it has to be done ground, from ground up. So modular has, needs to start from uh, from from day one. So obviously, modular gives lots of advantage in terms of how do we, how do we move things around. And here we talk about timber as lightweight uh, material. And, uh, and we need to make sure that, uh, that, our, that our system actually fits through all of the common transportation regulations. How do we store modules and, and how do we schedule the, uh, the transportation of it as a key part of it? Obviously, the construction in the factory and the comp construction of components. And then if we have modular components, then we can uh, utilize the mass production but still by assembling them in a different way, we can uh, get to a uh, custom designs. So hence a mass production ID, mass customization ID. So ideally modular would leave us, uh, lead us to a very quick uh, appro approval of planning permissions. So we, if we build modular and, and mass, uh, mass customizable uh, uh, houses, then we could also standardize the building application and, and almost carry out the building in, uh, application inspection automatically. That's what the uh, um, new building registry here in Estonia is promising us to do. And, and that could work really well with the modular, modularly designed buildings. Obviously, a good modular uh, design process ends with uh, a full uh, information-rich model where we have the full view of the building geometry uh, and filled with all metadata. We, we, it's appropriate for, for construction. Naturally, we have to have some flexibility. We can't say that the modular is, uh, uh, is going to be everywhere the same. We, uh, at least we have to connect it to the ground, and that's where we have a balance between the on-site and off-site. So, but, but the way we actually plan the foundations and design the foundations need to be reconsidered as well. But the bulk of the building body can certainly be done out of standard components. And standard components are really the key here. If we actually do the, what, what the commonly is, is done, where we have a design and, and then we actually just engineer it to modular, we have to reverse it. We have to have our modular kit of uh, parts or, or, or library of components or call them however you wish. But the main body of the building should be able to con uh, actually assemble it in a digital world out of those existing components, because only then we can achieve the efficiency in the design process. Similarly, the facades can be patterns. So we don't say that modular buildings have to be the same everywhere. Naturally, they don't. We can, we can actually combine the uh, modular body of the building with the modular facades, and they have different skins in different regions, in different uh, cultural, uh, social, and uh, economical contexts. And we need to have uh, our base uh, uh, building types done in modular. So the module, modular uh, design really needs, uh, we need to consider what, what's, the, what's the general building shape and size and, uh, and, and, and how we can use those uh, pre-designed but still flexible uh, uh, buildings to, to actually get them into the planning phase. So we now, Coming back from, from the architectural design and engineering of modular buildings and actually looking into already a planning. So, and this is an uncommon practice now to, to think modularly in the planning phase. I mean, and I'm saying that in, in order to really uh, achieve the maximum efficiency of modular building, we need to start from the planning. So, we need to start from day one. We need to say that we can blend this site in a modular way. So now coming back to the entire building lifespan, which is kind of an arch of life, if you wish, which is, it's not, uh, as a, uh, it, it's not circular in, by definition. I mean, there are components that are circular and can be used in different buildings, uh, but the span, uh, building lifespan really is, is uh, 
is an arch of life full and, and quite complicated, starting with planning design, uh, the uh, construction, the use of building uh, uh, repairs of the building, uh, demolition of the building. Now, really, the, what, when we look at the modular now, that's what we cover. And, and this is, uh, this is uh, not enough. In, uh, to actually achieve those affordability of the modular construction and uh, and also the cost uh, uh, cost to the environment or the environmental impact of that, what we clearly and and then clearly what we're missing is is actually the design phase, which is first uh, so a design phase here in the beginning of the uh, typical scope of modular should enable all of the rest. And even before planning uh, design, we have uh, our planning phase. So we need to go all the way there. What do we need for that? I think we need three key components to enable the, the automatic design of modular timber buildings. And first of all, we need uh, we need uh, house products or, or flexible house types. These designed by architects. Uh, and, and actually brought to the market uh, via, via the architectural design. Secondly, we can't actually put the load on architects saying that you have to invent your own construction and then and do completely your uh, buildings uh, from scratch. We need to enable them. We need to give them a industrial construction platform, if you wish, something that they can use and, and, and follow the rules of the design, design the unique building products but still stay within the rules of manufacturing, uh, assembly, uh, disassembly, and reuse. Um, so, uh, and, and finally, we need technology. So, but I'm gonna start with the, with the first one of these. So, so we need to think of the buildings more as a product. So this is for, for clear, but buildings are cars. They are located somewhere. So they have to, and they have to, there needs to be a greater flexibility in the house product. So we need to have ability to configure our houses, to be able to choose the layouts, the, the geometry of it, the, the roof line of it, the materials of it, uh, the, uh, and, and so forth. And ideally the modular product really helps you to, uh, to design and, and configure different sizes of houses. So those house types need to be customized. So they need to be able to personalize to the user needs, but they have to be uh, localized to the site uh, and the local context. So, so two things we need those uh, modular house types to be able to do. Now, as I said, very few architects can do it by themselves because it, it actually includes all the rest of it as well. It includes the rest of the building lifespan. So we need to enable our architects and then and give, give them uh, tools to do it. That's why we created this 369 pattern building system. So it's an industrial construction platform for, uh, for creating uh, uh, largely timber. So they actually hybrid building, hybrid timber, but uh, uh, buildings could go up to seven floors high and they fully mo modular, but can be localized and personalized. And, uh, and these are the main co basic components. I'm not going to go through it. You can have a look at the pattern buildings website. There's a, we have a full manual and it's, a, it's an open source system. So the idea of it is to give everyone a chance. Uh, that means architects, engineers, uh, manufacturers to benefit from, uh, from the system, to adopt it, to make their own uh, products or, uh, or their own services based, based on that. We figure out the basic connections. Uh, uh, we have uh, figured out a lot of engineering behind it. Uh, we figured that we, we created the basic modules and the basic, uh, but most of all, it, it's the set of principles for, uh, for creating the designs. Uh, we, we, we show how the modular buildings can be skinned to actually meet the different uh, uh, building regulations in different countries, uh, but also in a different uh, architectural context. And finally, uh, it's the technology that pulls them all together. So your, your, your building, uh, the uh, 
buildings are mass customizable buildings designed by architects we need to feed them to production so how that link will work and then so and then that's what we're trying to solve in the 369 bathroom building system together with the Kratomus uh, software so actually on one hand give the software for uh, for designers and then maybe not even designers but even the future homeowners to create the design by not just drawing things, but actually choosing and picking from a library of uh, existing components. And, and how do we feed them into the production? Uh, and finally, I'm going to just show you a quick live demo. So of, of, uh, how, we, how we're trying to bring it all together. And uh, let me just uh, we just try to do a share manual window so you can now hopefully see my browser window and this is this is a house designed by uh, designed by nomad architects and then it's based on 369 pattern building system and sits on the Creatonus, uh, software configurator so ideally you will be able to choose a size of the building here so um so uh, so from two story, three story, so it, it's within a one one house type, and uh, and maybe even go further. But let me jump back to this solution and then and, and see actually what else can we we have a look here. So so you you should be able to potentially choose the layout uh, and and the look of it. Uh, ideally, you you're actually looking at the. Uh, at the carbon footprint here and the environmental data alongside with that we can show how big it is and then uh, how much it can cost as well because we essentially what we do we have we're dealing with uh, uh, fixed components and once once they are once components are uh, are, are really fixed we can pre-calculate a lot in it we can pre-calculate the materials in it we can pre-calculate the, uh, the uh, possible cost in it and here it, it's a uh, and that going going to the uh, down to to conclusion is, uh, is is what we what we really need to to actually make the automated design of modular timber uh, uh, construction happening is uh, is we need we need the system we we, we started with the uh, 369 bathroom building system we welcome everyone to join in have a look at the website it's an open source system and then we want the entire industry to benefit from it uh, we want architects to join in and design their modular uh, customizable house types and finally we need the uh, technology to connect it together we have started with the technology already so we have configurators we have uh, uh, first connections with the manufacturing but there's still still a way to go and then understand how the technology connects both the planning uh, side and the production uh, production side this is still uh, there's the space for for lots of innovation so we're looking for partners to to embark on the journey uh, with us thank you everyone